Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this episode, we're going to talk about using Ansible Playbook to help make the process of updating your Raspberry Pi OS a little bit easier. And this is just part of what I've been talking about in the previous series, so that when you have, start getting the number of Raspberry Pis that I've ended up with, and you may end up that way too, even with Docker on some of these, it still is going to be some things that will help make life a little bit easier. And I'm going to show you both command line and playbook options, just so that if you don't want to use playbook or it's something you want to do on the fly, that's fine. But we're going to have some changes this time, so stay tuned. This is going to get interesting. Now, the content that you're going to see here is also available as an Amazon flash briefing and a podcast. So please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information on how to get those. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. Now, to review, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be introducing a change this time within Ansible. Now, when we started the last time, I had one file that did all the hosts at once. And that may not be what you want to do. Now, I'm going to show you how to do command line and then playbook. Now, this time we're dealing solely with the process of getting updates. So let's switch over to that. And I've already got a good session uh, running over here as opposed to having a bad session running. I realized as soon as I said that's not what I wanted. Now, most of the time you're going to be if I could spell right here in the Ansible directory. And I yes, I know I could put it in the search path. I just haven't done it yet. You know, it's on the list of things to the round to it list. So we what we will do here is we'll do an all and that will give me the display the way I want it. Now, what we're going to look at is you see, I've got three different host files. Now, obviously Ansible is only going to pay attention to that first one. So we've got I always keep a backup file of anything that I do just because there's no undo, at least not none that I found with, within Debian. So with using Nano, once you've edited, it's like the chicken and the pig in breakfast. The chicken was involved, but the pig was committed. So the file that I started using early on is now called host-master. Host now, here's the differences. All of my Raspberry Pi hosts are lumped under a group called RPI. And then you notice a section down here at the bottom. And let me, if you see this right here, then I've got an RPI VARS section. So that's great if all your hosts have the same account, but if they don't, this is not gonna work. So what we're gonna go do is we're gonna change to the host file that I now use. And this is gonna be, there's a little bit of an adjustment here, but I think you'll see that it's something that you wanna do. So the, I've got one called Docker because, or Docker one, that's the name of the Raspberry Pi system that's running my Unify uh, software that for all the Unify security gateway and the switch and the access point. Now that's the main thing it does. I may be sneaking some other stuff in there eventually. And when you start breaking these out separately, this is where you can have a separate VARS section for each one of those hosts. Now I've got my other one down here this called Ansible, and that's the Ansible host that I run all this stuff from. I, eventually, I will probably put it under Docker, but for right now, till I kind of get comfortable with it and figure out what I want to do, I've just got a Raspberry Pi 3B. So this is does not require a lot of overhead. So you see, I've got another section called Ansible's colon VARS, and again, the login credentials there. Now, here's where you can bring it all together. If you notice, I've got one that says RPI colon children. Now, the children there is the keyword to look at because you reference the host by the name you've got them up here. So I've got two ways to get to every host. I can either go by its individual name or I can do the main grouping. So that's where we're going to get started with this and then we'll move on to the next piece. Okay, now we're going to start with the first way to do this, and that's doing it command line. So as you can see, we've got on the screen, we've got Ansible, and you see Ansible again, but it's got capital A, and this is just what I've called the one group in the configure, 
file like you've seen earlier. Dash M, we're telling it the module to go to. Dash A, and we're saying upgrade yes, update the cache, and then it follows the rest of the line. So we'll go ahead and drop that lower third out of there so you can see the rest of the screen, and we'll press Enter. And it should come up here in just a second. It's going to be taking its sometimes its sweet time to to run. And just when you think it's uh, not going to work, and if it's not going to work, it usually errors out pretty quick. So at this point, it's going through a little bit of a process here. And I dare say it's probably doing an upgrade because normally when it takes this period of time, it's just taking its sweet time because there's apparently some upgrades it's having to go through and as you can see here okay success it just took a little while to get run now like i've pointed out earlier when you see and i'm <laughs> pointing to the screen like you can see this where you see the text under the under the ansible command line up it says warning could not find aptitude using app.get instead this is a bug i repeat this is a bug it's in 2.7 now if you were to go through the process of up Grading to 2.9, which I haven't yet. I'm going to work with 2.7 because that's what's available in the repository. Uh, just ignore that and go on. So you're seeing changed, false. It went through and it read everything. Didn't see any problems. And okay, so it's it's done. Now the next thing we're going to do is this is the other way to do it. This is doing with the playbook. So uh, we will do. Let's see star.yml dash all and let's see oh no it doesn't like it. it's a dash all that's what happens when you bounce back and forth between wow oh that's because there's nothing i'm not in the right directory it helps ansible okay now if i do that okay there we go now i've got you can see a series of files set up and what i always do i keep a master file so that I always have something to fall back to because if you make a mistake and delete something you shouldn't have, I haven't found a way yet to get it back. So I always keep a master file that has everything that I want in it. So we're going to do with an update basic, and I'm just going to type it out here on the screen. So if you're not familiar with that command, it's cat space update dash basic YML. So do you see what it's going to do here? I've got it set to go to Docker 1 because I don't want it to update all the servers. I want to go just to, to Docker 1. And I've got it becoming root. Some, I've been working with the command. Sometimes I need that. Sometimes I don't. So, but I've just been starting to leave that in there as kind of one of my standards. And your mileage may vary. If you don't want to or don't feel the need, that's fine. So I, I learned when I set this one up, when I update the cache, it didn't like doing an upgrade on the same line, at least when I tried it and I could have typed something wrong. So this is where I just kind of, you have to do some experimenting with some of this. So, I mean, that just is kind of is, is life to, to a degree. So the, I just put the upgrade. Yes. On another line. Now I have had a problem and if I can figure this out and oh, now if, when I can figure it out, I'll let you know, and if you figure it out, let me know, and we'll share it with everybody else. Because, you know, in this, I'm learning this just like you are. So there may be a trick you can figure out with this that maybe I just haven't found yet. So you'll notice at the bottom, there's a grep command. Now, this is the command that if you, if I, when I can get it running inside of the playbook, will show you exactly what files it had to upgrade. Until that happens, then you can just run this separately sshing into that particular rpi or raspberry file a lot of times you'll hear me say rpi and i'm just doing shorthand so that's the command that will show you what uh was going to get updated so now we'll do ansible playbook and we will go update basic yml so this is going to yet a different system this is the one that's going to my uh, system that's running Docker that is handling the Ubiquity gear I've got. So you can see it's already done the first OK, and that's where it's it's gotten the information that it needs. Now it's going out and doing the update. And these what you see coming out here under the task is exactly what you put uh, in under the name. So it's just giving you kind of a, a progress step by step. So you can kind of have it be a little chatty if you want to. 
And just like you saw when I ran it on command line, because both of these systems I haven't touched for several days, so it's going to take a little bit of time. So changed. Okay, so it says there's something there that needs to be updated. So this is now complete, and you see OK3, but you don't see three OKs on the screen. So if you look over here and look, you'll see an OK. That's number one. Change is counting as an OK. And then you've got your third OK at the bottom. And again, this is that showing that bug where it says couldn't find after you're using app against it. Again, this is unique to 2.7, so that's not a problem. And if you were to run that uh, grep command that we brought up on the screen directly on, in this case, my, my Docker system, then you would see what files got got upgraded. So there, as you can see, there's there's a million ways that you can do this. There's no uh, right or wrong way to, uh, to do it. It's just what's going to work best for you. And sometimes, and this is where I'm thinking as a part of my standard, to have it, to put the version of Ansible that I wrote the playbook in so that as things move forward, and even though there should be backwards compatibility, that doesn't mean there will be. So just some things I'm thinking about. And, you know, we'll just, if we share things as we go along, we'll all work together on this one. There are, as you can see, a variety of systems that you can do this with. I've got a Windows 10 system that will do some uh, work with here in a while. But since I've got a collection of Raspberry Pis, that's what kind of got me started in that way. And we'll see what, what the Windows side can do too. Because if you're going to be using this in your workplace, and I can see a lot of potential where it can be, because if you can do this and not have to be physically touching every system, then that is certainly an option to uh, to make life easier. And Cisco has redone their certification exams to where this is the kind of thing they're looking for. So even if you are not actively pursuing certifications, this is not a bad job skill to uh, to have in your back pocket because you never know when when you're going to need it. So if you find something that you would like me to take a look at, please let me know. I'll be happy to do that because if we all help each other a little bit, then we're in a lot better place at the end of the day. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos to the right or to the left of the next steps to the one you've just watched or other content that I have produced. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications and we'll see you in the next episode.